everybody. My name is Miss Lynn and I am a teaching artist in the Pace Art program. I am so happy to be in your classroom today. Can you give me a big wave hello with both arms like this? Can you say, hello, Miss Lynn? Let me see. Okay, let's try it one more time. Maybe a little softer with our voices, but still reach out with your arms, okay? Just right where you are, you're gonna reach your arms out. Hello, Miss Lynn. Okay, and one last time, let's focus on really reaching your arms, not just like this, but really having energy go whoosh, all the way out your arms, out your fingertips, up to the ceiling. Ready? We'll do it all together. Hello, Miss Lynn. Okay, awesome. So I'll be working with you all year through these videos and since the PACE program integrates the arts with classroom curriculum, and I'm a movement artist, that means we're going to use our bodies to explore lots of different subjects throughout the year. You'll recognize some of the same things you're learning with your teacher, only we'll be doing them through using creative movement. Now, you might be watching this today in your classroom, or maybe you're watching from home. Either way, Welcome. It's great to be connected. I'm coming to you today thanks to the Acadiana Center for the Arts and the Lafayette Parish School System in Lafayette, Louisiana. And you can find my videos anytime through the Lafayette Parish School System website or the Acadiana Center for the Arts YouTube channel. Well, let me tell you just a little bit about myself. My name is Lynn Clearfield and I use movement to make my art. I actually like to move in all kinds of ways. I love to roller skate. If you roller skate, raise your hand. I love to ride my bike. Any riding bike people out there? Yeah. And I love to dance. I also love to take walks and just this year, I am learning to skateboard. I like best to be moving outside. My favorite kind of dance to do is called improvisation. Do you guys want to try to say that one? Improvisation. Yeah, we'll learn more about that later, but improvisation is basically just moving your body however it wants to move in that moment. We'll do some of that later in the semester. All right. Today we're gonna to learn about two different forms of art and a few reasons why humans choose to make art. All of you will get to make some pieces of art today. They'll be small and you'll all get to use two different art forms. And we'll also begin to learn some self-awareness practices. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So we're ready to get started. We will always start with a warm up to get our bodies ready to move. So, to do this, I'm going to ask you to stand up, push in your chair, and stand right behind it. Okay? And I'll do that with you. Okay, so here I am standing up. Um, so, if there is a desk behind you, make sure you are not too close to it. All right? So, take a look right now. Make sure you're not too close to whatever's behind you. Also make sure you're not too close to your own chair that's in front of you, okay? So this spot that might be between your chair and the desk or wall behind you, that's gonna be called your safe spot, okay? Um, a good safe spot is a place in the room that is not too close to any other person and not too close to any hard thing like a wall or a cabinet or a shelf or a desk. Okay? In most classrooms, your best safe spot is right behind your chair. Okay, so I'm going to ask your classroom teacher, please, or if you're at home, your parent or caregiver, right now to look around the room and make sure everyone looks safe. Okay? And you should look too. Okay? All around yourself. Make sure you're not too close to anything um, that's hard or any other person. Okay? So, once we find our good safe spot, we stand in what's called neutral position, 
okay? Neutral is a word that means like uh, right, in, right in the middle. Like it's not really anything. It's not too high or too low or too um, anything. It's just neutral. Okay, this means for us, it's going to mean standing straight and tall, feet pushing down into the floor, head floating up toward the ceiling, shoulders relaxed, and arms hang naturally by your side. That was a lot, so I'm going to say it again, okay? You're going to be standing straight and tall, feet pushing down into the floor. Imagine your head floating up toward the ceiling, shoulders are relaxed, and arms hang naturally by your side. All right? This is called neutral position. So go ahead and get into neutral position by the time I count to three. One, two, and you might already have been there. That's great. It's a great place to, to be. So stay there for a moment so your teacher can see your beautiful neutral positions. And you should feel tall, strong, relaxed, and ready for anything. Once we're here in our neutral position, we're ready to start our warm-up. So for today, just please follow along. Make sure you use your eyes and your brain because I might do something different every single time we see each other, okay? So here we go. Let's start just breathing in and stretching both arms up to the ceiling. So breathing in and breathing out. Just let those arms come down. Okay, let's do that again. Your breathing should be um, pretty calm, all right? You're literally just breathing like you normally breathe, all right? Just maybe a tiny bit deeper. It shouldn't be loud, it should be calm, all right? Here we go, in, reach up let everything go let that breath go out okay now or this time we're just gonna take one arm okay so one arm up breathe in you're gonna hang yourself to the side and look down so you should feel like this arm is attached to a string and you're just hanging on this side okay and then come back up breathe in ah let everything go as you exhale Guess what? We're going to try it on the other side, okay? This arm up, breathe in, and hang yourself, look down, look back up at your arm, breathe in, and everything goes down, exhale, good. We're going to do that one more time, here we go. Breathe in. Okay, very good. Let's take our shoulders up and bring them forward and down. Shoulders up, back and down. Again, shoulders up, forward and down. Shoulders up, back and down. Take your arm really carefully, make a half a circle to the top and let it come down. Other arm, half a circle to the top. Make sure you do these slowly. All right, one more time. You want to not hit your chair in front of you. Okay, we get to wiggle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That was a slow wiggle. And you're gonna take your belly button and have it go around. One, two, other way, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Last thing, we're just going to lift our legs to either side. So you're going to take one leg, kind of kick it out a little bit, lift it up, put it down. Other leg, kick it out, lift it up, put it down. Okay, one more. Uh-huh. Here we go. Uh-huh. There we go. And we'll do one big, huge arm circle. Cross your arms. Bring them up over your head. Open them to the ceiling like you're welcoming the sun in the morning. And one more like that. <sighs> All right, great job, everybody. Let's end in neutral position and go ahead and have a seat in your chair. Did you know that there are lots of different forms of art? There are. Today, we're going to learn about two of them. We're gonna learn about visual art and movement art. Let's start with visual art. 
That is what most people think of when they hear the word art. Visual art is art that we enjoy through seeing, using our sense of sight. Some visual art that we might enjoy seeing would be a painting or a sculpture. We might enjoy seeing a painting like this one. Okay, this is a painting I did with my whole family. It was my daughter's request for her birthday this year that we all worked together to create a painting. So everyone in our family did a part and all these parts make one whole painting. Can you tell how many people are in my family? Four, right? You can see it. Um, each of these parts then is called a fourth or a quarter of the painting. And four fourths or four quarters make one whole. So here's one. Here's two, here's three, and there's four. You might like one of these fourths or quarters better than another one. So on the count of three, point to the one you like best. Ready? With no sound. One, two, three. All right, good job. Some of you really like this quarter the best. Some of you really liked this quarter or fourth of the painting the best. Some of you pointed to this one and some of you liked this quarter or this fourth the best. Um, I'm noticing that they are all different. Why do you think they're all different? Yes, because each one of us in our family thinks differently and likes to use different colors in different ways. So each of these quarters is different because everyone in my family who painted them is a different person, right? And each one, I think, is very beautiful, but different, right? Just like every person in your classroom. Each person is wonderful, but different. Okay. So what is movement art, you might ask? That's when you use your body to make your art, okay? I'm gonna show you a piece of movement art right now that was created by the Mark Morris Dance Company. So you'll know what I'm talking about when I say movement art. This piece is called Gloria. to see people dancing, isn't it? Did you have a favorite part? I always like this part. <laughs> you can show your favorite part if you want with no sound. Show me. Okay. I'm noticing that in this piece there was a group of people all doing the same thing and there was a single person in the middle kind of doing his own thing, right? They were all using their bodies to create this movement art and we'll be doing something like that later this year. So let's think about why do humans make art anyway? Whether it's visual art or movement art, there could be lots of reasons, right? Sometimes a person creates a painting or a dance because they just think it's beautiful or interesting. Sometimes a person creates art to help tell a story. Sometimes a person creates art to explore something, almost like doing an experiment. We're gonna learn two more possible reasons today, and of course, there could be a lot more. The first reason we're gonna look at is using, is creating art to express a feeling, and the second is creating art in order to learn something. Let's explore that first reason right now, the idea that a person might create a piece of art to express something he or she is feeling. You should have a piece of paper and some crayons on your desk. If you don't have these on your desk, I'll pause for just a minute while your teacher or your parent helps you with that. Once you have your piece of paper, let's just fold it in half, all right? Uh, what do you guys call this? Hamburger style, yeah? And then open it back up. Okay, great. So let's start by imagining some feelings. 
Once we've imagined them, then we'll draw them, okay? Just to play today, let's imagine that we are feeling angry first, all right? So could you please close your eyes and try to remember what you feel like when you feel angry. If you want to remember a time when you were angry, that's okay. Take a moment, sink into that feeling, and just feel it. You might take a breath. And just try to feel what it feels like to be angry. When you're ready, open your eyes, and I want you to look at your crayon. What color might you choose to show that angry feeling? There's no right or wrong answer. Whatever color feels angry to you is fine. So choose that color. And at the top of your paper, color like you're angry. Okay, I'll give you a count of eight. You ready to go? I'll do one too. Get your color for angry and go. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now let's let that go for now, all right? We're not actually angry, we're just sort of imagining that we're angry, all right? What did that feel like? Did you, if you colored with a lot of force, raise your hand. Okay, if you colored with hardly any force at all, raise your hand, okay? And what kind of lines did you make? Just look and sort of notice for yourself. What kind of lines? Were they straight? Were they wavy or something else? Now, if you want, you can hold your drawing up so someone else in your class can see it, all right? And while you're doing that, you can look at someone else's drawing and see how they express their angry feelings. We're gonna show our drawings with no sound at all. We're just holding it up and looking at someone else's. We'll do this for a count of five. I'll show you mine too. One, two, three, four, five. My feelings were black and sharp like this. Maybe yours looked like mine and maybe it didn't. Either way is okay. Whatever came out is real. All right, let's turn this feeling into a little movement. Okay, so go ahead and find your good safe spot behind your chair. You're going to push in your chair, find that good safe spot. Make sure you're not too close to a person or a desk. Okay, and you're going to stand in neutral position, strong and tall and ready for anything. And as I count to three, you're going to show me a pose using your whole body that feels angry to you. We'll do four of them. And it doesn't matter what they look like, it just matters what it feels like. You ready? So here's our first angry pose. Angry one. Angry two. Angry three. Angry four. Okay. And let's take a breath. <sighs> Shake a little bit and let all that angry stuff go. All right, um, go ahead and please have a seat. Let's figure out how you're feeling right now. There's a way to find out. So again, you're gonna just sit in your chair, feet flat on the floor. You're gonna close your eyes for a moment and move your attention inside your body just like a turtle would put his head inside his shell for a moment to look around inside there. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. So relax and tune in to how you're feeling right now. Focus on your breath and focus on how you feel. You might be feeling very calm or you might be feeling a little nervous. You might be feeling curious or pretty happy or you might be feeling sad or tired. All of these feelings, of course, are okay, and you can use all of them to inspire art. I'll give you a moment to focus on your feeling right now. So go ahead and close your eyes and just try to feel how you're feeling right now. Even if 
you can't name the feeling, you know how you feel, and you can link that to a color that feels like that to you. The drawing will naturally express how you're feeling. So go ahead, open your eyes, and choose a color that feels like how you were feeling inside. All right, look through your colors and pick one that feels the same as how you were feeling. And go ahead and use the bottom half of your paper to express that feeling. We'll draw for a count of eight, so kind of channel that feeling into your crayon. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, crayons down. So if you want, you can say out loud what feeling you are showing on the count of three. We, we'll say it all together, okay? Um, and if you don't want to say how you are feeling or if you don't know the name of it, that's okay, all right? But we're, if you want to say how you are feeling, we're going to say it on three. Here we go. One, two, three. Turkey. Okay, so everyone was feeling a little different, okay? Um, all right, whatever that feeling was, let's turn that into movement, all right? So this was mine, just so you can see it. I was feeling pretty calm with a little bit of spark. That's what it felt like for me. So go ahead and find your good safe spot behind your chair. Start in neutral position. And when I say go, you can start moving using your whole body in a way that expresses that feeling that you have right now, okay? You can move exactly how that felt for a count of eight. You can change poses every count or you can use the whole time to move continuously, whatever makes sense to you. When you're moving, make sure that you stay in your own space, okay? Behind your own chair. We don't wanna hurt any of our friends by accident, okay? So you have a little bit of room um, to move and you can use all of that. Just be careful of other people that are near you. Ready to go. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Go ahead and please have a seat. So now you know that art can express a feeling. It's pretty good at that, actually. Um, I want to talk about our second reason why a person might want to make art, and that is to understand something better, okay? Sometimes we use art in order to learn something or to remember something that you learned, and that's what we are going to do every time I see you, for sure. Let's pretend today that we are learning about plants and we want to remember how a plant grows, which parts grow first, and the different parts that form as it grows, okay? We could do a drawing of that whole process. Let's do one right now. Go ahead and turn your paper over on the count of three. One, two, three. Okay, about one quarter of the way up your paper, draw a line across that will be the ground, just about like that. And let's put a seed right on top of the ground. All right. Under the ground, we're gonna draw roots going into the dirt. Let's draw four of them, all right? A plant makes roots first, growing down, before it can be strong enough to grow up. All right, we've started. Find a green if you can. You can do this all in one color if you don't have one, but if you have a green, that's great. The next thing that happens on a plant is it forms a stem. So go ahead and draw that. And guess what? Some leaves grow on the stem. I bet you already know about that. And there will be a flower at the top. You can choose whatever color you like for that. You might make a little circle and make some petals. Okay, and we're not going to color it today. This is just to show you that the experience of doing this drawing will remind you what was the first step 
in growing. What did you draw first, right after the seed came down to the ground? What did you draw? These roots, right? So that will remind us always that a plant needs roots first before it can grow up toward the sun. That was a visual art way to learn and show how a plant grows, right? We can use movement art to do the very same thing. Here's what I want you to do. Um, go ahead and sort of back up your chair a little bit. So scooch it back so that you have room between your desk and your chair so that you can stand up and sit down in your chair safely, okay? I'm gonna move mine back like this so you can see just what's happening. Um, let's pretend that your seat is the ground, okay? That you drew on your paper. Remember that line that you drew? And guess what? You are going to be the seed, all right? So let's start like this and let's curl up in your chair. You're a little tiny seed, so you really wanna curl up small on your chair like this and get all comfortable in your ground. So here you are in the dirt. What happens first? We already know this, right? We just learned it. What grows first? The roots. Okay, great. What part of us could reach down into the dirt easily? Our feet and our legs, right? So go ahead and do that. Reach those guys down into the dirt like that. Good job. Do you remember what we drew next? That's actually the next part that grows. We're gonna start the what? The stem, here it goes. And have some leaves pop up as you grow that stem. There you go. And the stem gets taller and taller and taller with its leaves. And then finally, there will be a flower at the top, okay? And that flower can be any shape that you want. Be a big round flower like a rose. It could be a pointed flower like a lily. Okay, any shape that you want. So on the count of three, let's do let's do stem, leaf, flower. Here you go. Stem, leaf, flower. Well, great job, everybody. We just made movement art that will help us to remember something we learned. Now you will probably always remember. I hope that roots grow first on any plant. Go ahead and please have a seat. You know what I'm noticing? A plant growing is a lot like a person practicing self-awareness. What do I mean by that? Well, just like the seed, we all start growing first by looking below the surface before we are ready to grow up and show our face to the world. This is called practicing self-awareness. It's what we did when we looked inside of ourselves to figure out what we were feeling. Self-awareness is a great thing because if you know how you're feeling about something, then you can figure out what you need next. If you're anxious, maybe you need to take some deep breaths to try to calm down. If you're sad, maybe you need someone to give you a hug and you could ask. And if you're angry, Maybe you need to express that anger in a safe way so you can get past it to a calm place again. And if you're a plant putting down roots to drink water, maybe the next thing you need is sunlight. So now you know a little bit more about how to make two different kinds of art, visual art and movement art. You also know a few different reasons why people make art and also we learned a tool to how to become more aware of your feelings and use them to create art. As you're going through your week, try to notice when you see some art. Remember, it could be visual art like a painting or a poster or even an album cover. Or maybe you see movement art like in a music video or a dance concert or maybe a movie. You might think about the reason that person seems to have made that piece of art. Let's just focus on our breath to end class. If you would, just sit in your chair nice and tall. Sit a little forward in your chair. You don't want to lean back. You want to sit up tall. Um, feet on the floor in front of you. Hands on your knees. 
and your breathing should be just be calm and quiet okay please go ahead and close your eyes I'm gonna talk you through it breathe in through your nose quietly and out through your mouth keep on going in through your nose and out through your mouth in through your nose and out through your mouth and one more time in through your nose out through your mouth spend a little more time breathing on your own and slowly open your eyes and kind of come back to the to the room Thank you so much for joining me today. I wish you a great rest of your day and I super look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye everybody.